finding your VTuber niche and curating content around it is something that I think the majority of new and veteran VTubers struggle with, but I also know how hard it is to stay motivated when it feels like everything that you do just isn't working. But you know what's helped me? Time management and various quality of life changes that I have implemented over the years because now I don't struggle as much with these anymore. And I think anyone watching this could implement the same exact things that I've learned. Welcome back to Mari Monday where I answer your questions while playing a game. Today, I'm gonna be playing one of my favorite games of all times, The Sims 2 for the Game Boy, because I think that this game is very fitting for the various things I wanna talk about today. And no, I will not further explain any more than that. Our first question is from Geary14112. And I noticed that this question popped up a few times for this week's video, which shout out to my YouTube and Patreon members, Swiftstar and Daniela. Thank you! 2024 is getting hard to find your niche to stand out in the CC world because almost anyone can stream or create content. What's your thoughts on it, on how to stand out or grow organically? Any advice on finding a VTuber niche within the content creation landscape? And are there any example niches you can think that you don't believe have been tapped much by VTubers? And then, how did you find the content niche you wanted to put yourself into? I'm in that exploration phase, but at the same time, locking into one thing feels limiting. And you know, I find it interesting that so many people want to learn more about VTuber niches. Like, I am actually so freaking excited that you all want to learn more about that. Finally, us YouTubers, us amazing YouTubers who focus on niches and stuff, it's our time to finally shine. <sighs> You know, Shindigs makes a lot of Twitter posts showcasing like unique VTuber designs and stream setups, which in itself is some kind of niche, but I notice nobody actually talks about creating niche content as a VTuber since it's pretty common for the majority of VTubers to just stream, play video games, and act like a cartoon character on screen. Not that there's anything wrong with that, and that is a niche in itself, but... There's a lot more to what you can do as a VTuber because it stems from being a faceless content creator. You know, you can do anything that a faceless YouTuber does, but the hardest challenge to overcome is the fact that the majority of VTubers are anime oriented and a lot of people in the West just don't like anime. So if you have an avatar that is more cartoony like Western cartoons, then you might think that you have a leg up on the rest of us, right? Well, to an extent, but the fact that you're using Live 2D or a 3D model is still enough weirdness to create this uncanny valley to like a foreign audience. And if you're a furry, then I, I don't know, you're, you're kind of on your own with this one. I don't know anything about like furry stuff. It's why you see so many commentary channels that are faceless go the PNG route, where they just have expressions of their model to indicate when they're talking. This is how I've seen channels like The Right Opinion, Paper Will, even Nux Taku and Evanito were PNG tubers for at one point. And they do that to combat the uncanny valley of having an animated model because for whatever reason, people just, I don't know, like they just have a problem with live 2D or 3D models. And I think it's just because they're not used to it. Like even Shindigs is doing this with his own model in his live streams where he has like a PNG and even though it's like animated and GIF style, it's still a PNG. It's not a live 2D or a 3D model. And I have been seeing the whole PNG route becoming a very popular way for any VTuber that isn't doing the typical stream a video game and act like a cartoon on screen is doing. It's a pattern that I don't think many people are noticing, but this plays a very important role in regards to finding your niche as a VTuber because you have to ask yourself this. Do you plan on making content that fits the anime style VTuber vibe? Or do you plan on making content that fits the faceless content creator YouTuber streamer vibe? This should give you some directions on how to carry yourself as a VTuber because presentation is everything. And that doesn't mean that you can't combine the two because, you know, in terms of like how I found the niche that I wanted to put myself into, I kind of blurred the lines between these two types of niches, which is very, very hard and my god, it is so hard and sometimes I don't know if like if I'm VTubing the correct way, but what it does mean is that you need to think smarter about how you want to 
go about yourself as a VTuber. Because something that I kind of struggle with is that people don't like the way I go about VTubing. I use the live 2D model and even like the 3D, which makes you think I would follow the anime aesthetics of like what a VTuber is. But for whatever reason, I'm taking that and combining it with like faceless content creation and like YouTuber stuff. And the thing is, there's a lot of people who have a problem with how I go about my content because they don't like the fact that a VTuber is doing standard YouTube content. And I'm one of the few VTubers who does this. Normally, you'll do like the PNG thing or you act like an anime character on screen. If there hasn't really been that many YouTubers or well, VTubers who are going this route, besides like the OGs, like I'm talking about Natsume Moe, and even then, like her channel with Eileen, they, um, oh man, I can't believe I'm bringing up the old baddies here. Um, their content is unique because they're not VTubers. They were anime girls making YouTube content which is still a VTuber, it's just they weren't called VTubers. Like literally on their channel, they would say, anime girl does this, anime girl does that. Like they, it wasn't VTuber does this, VTuber does that. And now looking back at it, yes, that is still considered VTubing and they were very popular with creating that type of content on that channel. And that is something that I very much aspire to be like, except instead of being a full entertainment channel, I do education plus entertainment, and I'll kind of talk a bit more about that later on in this video. One particular niche I haven't seen that much in VTubing is finances, which is a huge niche on YouTube. Like, I think it would be interesting to have an accounting VTuber to help us with our finances, but again, are they going to go the anime style route where they stream and act like a cartoon on the screen giving us financial advice? Or are they going to go the faceless route and stick to a PNG style where they're a bit more serious and just use their avatar to represent themselves on screen while they go over the finances? There's no right or wrong answer with that type of like direction you'd want to go for your channel if you wanted to get into the finance niche. However, the difference between those two is that one is in the entertainment niche and the other is in the education niche, but both are still considered financing in like in terms of like the niche for vtubing and the reason why i want to specify that is because the entertainment style where they want to act like a cartoon they want to be the vtuber and how the anime like the live 2d and 3d is that you don't have to be that serious with your financial advice like you can give some advice but the idea behind it is that it's entertainment so you're it's like imagine an anime girl your wife who is giving you financial advice but like she gets like an upskirt shot or something like it's it's entertaining she's gonna be a character whereas the faceless version has a character and they can still do like character like elements but it is much more serious with the content and it's much more educational you don't really have that many jokes here and there and like it's definitely a different vibe i hope that explanation can <laughs> I hope that explanation makes sense and sparks some ideas for people because I was trying to think about how I wanted to explain that without people being like, but what about you, Mari? Like, I know I'm a weird acclimation of the two genres. And as I said earlier, a lot of people don't like that I do that. A lot of people would just rather me either just do full PNG and just if I want to be like a YouTuber and then they, then they can be like, well, you're not an actual VTuber or they want me to be like that cartoon on screen. And like, I'm sorry, but go Yourself. Like, I'm going to keep doing what I want to do, and you can't stop me. I'm going to continue to bridge the gap between the two because I very much think you can combine the two, and this video is a living example of that. Now, our next question is by Illum, who is also a YouTube member. Thank you! And it says, What is something you've done or changed in your life that you feel has notably improved your personal experiences as a content creator? And I'm going to bump it together with this question here because my answer to that is going to be improving my time management. I suffer from time blindness because I have ADHD. So every tip I've tried, like writing down a to-do list or getting a planner and blah, 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 these have all failed. And I could never really find a trick in order to make me better at managing my time because there is no trick. The only real hack that seems to have worked for me is by being smarter about my content creation process rather than just 
working harder and trying to add all these unnecessary things because I am not neurotypical. I can't just suck it up and just do it. That's not how executive dysfunction works. In fact, that's exactly why I can't. I'm very emotional. I can't regulate my emotions. Sometimes I'll see like one negative comment and it just sets me off and ruins my entire day. And there's nothing that I can do about that. I cannot control that. I can't control the things that prevent me from doing the things that I want to do. And rather than trying to control that, I've learned that It's better to just take time to acknowledge what it is that is upsetting me or preventing me from doing things and just taking breaks. Like I struggle with staying interested in my current projects or just not having enough energy to continue working. And a lot of this stemmed to me not creating content with a clear purpose, which is very different than seeing a negative comment and getting upset because more often than not, Whenever I couldn't figure out what it is I really want to do, I would find like excuses to try to like make myself feel worse, like self-sabotage. So I would just like doom scroll on Twitter or go find something negative and be like, aha, now my day is ruined. So now I can like make content when in reality, it's because my content didn't have a clear purpose and I was struggling with that. A lot of creators talk about streaming with a purpose. And I think that this is true to a certain extent. Like, a lot of them will say to plan your stream to turn into a video later on, but I often felt like this took up more of my time than it should because I would stream for hours, then have to trim down that entire VOD and somehow scramble all these clips together into a coherent video, which is very difficult for me to do. And that's because my executive dysfunction prevents me from being able to conceptualize the concept of my video in a coherent manner. Um. I am emphasizing these words because they're important to understand. When I say conceptualize the concept, I'm talking about what value does this video serve to the viewer? That's like the conceptualizing part. Like what is it actually doing? Why should someone watch and care about this? And then the coherent part is, okay, I said a lot of like really good bits and informations, but do they all work together? Is it paced correctly? Is it really getting my thoughts out in a concise and orderly manner in a way that the viewer can understand and not get overwhelmed? These are things that as someone with ADHD really struggle with because our brain is just jumbled with all these different intrusive thoughts. Like I wrote like a whole script for today's video to answer the question to keep me on point and I've been going off script this entire time like many times so far. And that's because I get random ideas to add more commentary on the things that I'm currently talking about, even though I literally just wrote down exactly what I wanted to say. And yet here I am still going off script. <sighs> Basically, I do this because I either start to get bored or overwhelmed, and then I just abandon the project entirely. So instead of trying to fight with my executive dysfunction, what I do now is just focus on the things that I am good at and can accomplish without thinking too much about it. In particular, I'm really good at just kind of talking and explaining things. Like, instead of trying to form these streams into videos, it's just better for me to make the video I already had in mind and then use my live streams as a way to create something special that you can only get live. And because I am okay at talking and stuff, if there's like a particular clip I want to include, and it happens to fit in a video topic that I am working on, then I'll just throw that in. Then I can take my live streams and make little clips to highlight some of the best moments or include them as B-roll for my scripted videos, but basically putting less pressure on myself to over plan these live streams for future potential videos has made me stop getting as overwhelmed because I decided to look at a live stream as like a separate thing that I don't need to worry about as much anymore. Now, how do you do that when you work a full-time job, right? <laughs> and this one is tricky to explain because um, I work two jobs, I take on art commissions, and still manage to find time to make content on this channel. But um, I do that by hiring editors. Wow, what a great response. That totally answered the viewer's question. Who needs to keep watching the rest of the video, right? Especially when Charlie just released his own creator cup. Let's go, baby! Use code MY for 10% off on your entire order, baka. Okay, okay, let me explain because it's not as simple as just throwing your money to an editor and then calling it a day, right? Like, I edit my own content, 
But because I started a second job, I don't have time to do that anymore. And me trying to finish up my art commissions while also working on my rebrand has given me even less time to work on my own content on this channel. So my line of thinking is that I had to give up on something in order to make time for everything. And to me, that was hiring an editor. Being a content creator is an expensive investment. And if you're broke, well, <laughs> then you have got to prepare having many sleepless nights until you can afford to delegate those tasks to someone else. Like something has to give up and it's up to you on what it is you want to give up. But well, I mean, that's how, that's how you do it. Like, I don't know how else I could explain this. Like, like this, like this could be you streaming one less hour. So that way you can go work on video editing or just not streaming at all and just solely focus on making shorts and videos. This could also mean you losing an extra hour of sleep every night and getting up earlier to plan the rest of your content and do editing. And let me tell you, I only get four hours of sleep every night and from what I have seen, that's a pretty common thing among YouTubers. I don't know about streamers since most of the time they just hire an editor so they don't need to worry about that, but You'll notice that a lot of us just focus on the things that we are good at and can quickly get done. And then we delegate the things that take up the most of our time or that we find tedious to someone else who can do it much more efficiently. Ah, <sighs> pay to win, right? That just sounds so demotivating, huh? Like I tried to think of different ways on how to answer this without like being a downer, but it's actually the truth that a lot of creators don't want to admit because well, <laughs> being a content creator isn't for everyone since trying to do all this stuff makes it uh, really hard to stay motivated especially when you've been trying so hard but it feels like everything you do has zero returns which brings me to our final question by daniela again and she asks how do you stay motivated creating the content you do now for me specifically okay because I think the type of content I create on this channel is very different from the rest of the big VTubers. Um, I have a hard time staying motivated because, uh, to be honest with you, um, I feel like the content I create doesn't provide the type of value I want it to. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, remember earlier how I said a lot of people have a problem with how I go about creating content on this channel? Like, I don't do the typical anime VTuber niche where I stream and play video games and act like a cartoon on screen. <laughs> like, <laughs> I wonder if that's going to irritate anybody that I keep saying that. <laughs> Honestly, Mari Monday is the closest thing I have settled on with incorporating that particular niche on this channel because I have tried doing that. Like I have tried being the playing video games and streaming and being the cartoon on screen. And I was not successful doing that kind of content. Like <laughs> the only content that seems to be successful for me are either tutorials or talking about drama. Go figure, right? <laughs> like. I could literally not use my model and those types of videos would still get views. I could even use an AI voice instead of my real voice and guess what? It would still get views. Because the thing about those two content niches are that it doesn't matter who is talking about it. Tutorials and drama will always bring in viewers as long as the topic is interesting to the viewer. And well, that used to really hurt my feelings because any content that did revolve around my personality would just tank. And for the longest time, it would feel like nobody actually cares about me. And maybe I should just stop trying as much because if I want to get a lot of views on this channel, then the answer is obvious. Make more content that actually gets views. It's not rocket science. It's pretty easy to do. But having this mindset where I would focus on the views made it difficult for me to stay motivated with my content in the long run. And I burned out a lot because even during my 30 day video upload challenge, I noticed my best performing videos are either about drama or some kind of like advice and like tutorial. 
So what I have learned after doing the 30 day content challenge is that as long as the topic is really interesting, then people will watch it. And I don't even need to do daily uploads to achieve this. Like last week, I was frustrated after I completed the challenge because I thought all the knowledge and info I gained over four years could at least make one of my entertainment videos perform better. <sighs> but the reality is, well, <laughs> I don't have a very likable personality and this probably sounds really demotivated and sad, right? But as you can tell, I don't feel sad talking about it anymore, and I've just accepted that this is fine. And it doesn't bother me anymore. And no, I'm not just playing it up to try to, like, be happy in front of the camera, because it actually just doesn't bother me anymore. Because, you know, I don't need to have a likable personality to be a good content creator. I just need to make good content that serves a purpose to someone and is also in alignment with my goals as a VTuber since my goals are what keep me motivated with continuing to make the content that I do on this channel. Early in the year, I've written down what my goals are, both short term and long term, and every time I start to lose focus or get demotivated, I take a look at my goals again. And then I review my content to see if what I've been doing so far has been making progress towards my goals. If it is, then I don't need to feel bad about it. But if it isn't, then instead of feeling bad and getting down on myself, I need to look a bit further on why this isn't progressing me to my goals and actually understand what is going on. Because things are not always as what it seems. For example, instead of focusing on video views, I look at the comments to measure if my content is good or not because that's what is more in alignment with my goals. I want to have conversations with people and I can't do that if nobody comments on my videos. Even the negative ones that irk me are still considered progress towards my goal even though hmm, sometimes the things people say are just so brain dead and stupid but it is what it is. If I can't get you to leave a comment, then my content wasn't good enough and I need to try again. Something about my topic either wasn't interesting enough or it wasn't engaging enough. And that's what I have deduced as my two problems that I face when uploading a video. The goal of the 30 day video challenge was to get data on what's working well on my channel, regardless of the view counts or not. And what's going to be the most efficient way with making content moving forward because um it was very difficult doing daily uploads since it took up every ounce of my free time and i couldn't just hire an editor to do daily uploads because some of these videos need to be done within a few hours of upload time so i just did all the editing for them and i kind of figured out a good mm, I want to say rhythm with how I can go about making my videos very fast and efficiently by doing this challenge and like what things I shouldn't focus on when making my videos and editing them because before I would spend a lot of time trying to finalize and make everything pretty and sometimes that's just not necessary as long as the topic is good and you can still keep the person watching it engaged. So I was just adding extra edit uh, edits <laughs> that were not necessary. Now, that doesn't mean you should do exactly what I do because maybe for you, getting the most amount of views is actually really important and in alignment with your goals. But for me specifically, it isn't. And therefore, I no longer worry about those videos getting the most amount of views on my channel. And instead, I focus on creating the best possible video that will make you want to leave a comment with your thoughts and more importantly, a meaningful comment, not just like a wow, awesome video. Like, don't get me wrong, I do like those comments too. But that doesn't tell me how the video made you feel. It tells me you like it, which makes sense. Okay, and like, I do take that into consideration. But I don't really know a lot about you from that. I just know that you happen to like this particular topic. And, you know, I guess that still is pretty helpful, isn't it? to some extent, but I, I want it to like be more of like a conversation. I do like reading, even if you write like a novel, I do like reading that kind of stuff. And it interests me because it makes me learn a bit more about your perspective on stuff. Like the whole goal is to make you want to leave a comment with your thoughts so we can continue this conversation even after the video ends. 
Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to stop making content that I know will get me the most amount of views because those types of videos do serve a purpose on my channel besides uh, being a video view farmer. I actually have been working on a format for those types of videos that serve a different purpose for a different goal I have. But as much as I would like to explain what I mean by that, um, Hopper keeps trying to chew on my freaking cord right now, and um, he's made me notice how much time I've been on talking about this video. So uh, look at the time. That's all I have for today. If you would like to submit a question for next week's video, then leave a comment down below. And if you're a YouTube member or on my Patreon, then uh, I hope you look forward to the sneak peek on my next video project. Thanks so much for watching, and remember... Everything reminds you of something.